Hello, this is Dr. Janice R. Love, and thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Are you currently dealing with relationship challenges, especially in your marriage? Are you dealing with trust issues? Or maybe it's just your communication is not right. Well, stay tuned. We are going to be speaking with Larry Sidney, who is a couple expert. And he's going to be talking about how counseling can save your marriage. So stay tuned. So tonight we are going to be talking about how counseling can save your marriage. So let me introduce you to our guest for tonight. He is a friend of mine. And actually, this is the first guest other than my husband, who is a male who is appearing on Asking for a Sister Friend. So you know he's very special and he's an expert. So I'd like to introduce you to Larry Sidney, who is a licensed professional counselor. He also has the LCSW and NCC, a whole lot of initials behind his name. He is the owner of the Plaza Group, which is a, a counseling service here in the Kansas City area. He's born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri, going to Central High School, if there's any Central High School people out there. And Northwest Missouri um, is where he did his bachelor's. And of course, his master's level work was done at UMKC. He has been counseling for over 39 years. And he has helped several individuals, couples, and families to resolve their difficulties, whether it is um, depression, anxiety, loss, grief, trauma. But his sweet spot is really working with couples, as you'll hear um, as we talk about it tonight. What I love about Larry is he's very compassionate. He is a very caring person. He is genuinely concerned about his clients. I know his whole family, his um He's married to Deb and they've been married for over 44 years. I know his two children and I have yet to meet the 12 grandchildren. But uh, the one thing I also love about Larry is he is he is a man of faith and his favorite scripture is Psalms 23, the 23rd Psalm. So welcome to the stage, everybody, Mr. Larry Sidney. Good evening. I'm glad you're here. So, um, you. and I'm glad you're doing this. Like I, like I told the audience, you are the first male that I have allowed on the Asking for a Sister Friends show. So this is a very special privilege you have on today. Well, I appreciate very much you having me on your show. <laughs> it's an honor being here. So we've probably known each other for some 25 years, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, a little, a little known um, history fact, which I, I tell every time I get a chance, is that um, Larry was the person that convinced me to apply for a job that I basically ended up working at for 23 years. So he's always special as, as part of our family because he um, he convinced me along with the Lord. I think the Lord used him to convince me to go ahead and make that move 24 years ago now, Larry. All right, so we're here to talk about how counseling can save your marriage. And um, I know that you are a, an expert when it comes to couples. So how did it evolve to where you, um, got, you've gotten so good with working with couples? Well, it basically started with my just overall counseling experience. As you mentioned, I work with individuals uh, and families initially and uh, through this experience, uh, as I started to work with couples, I found working with couples to be very fascinating, uh, listening to two individuals who love one another. But at some point in time in their relationship, something went awry and they became distant. And so um, it became a challenge to me to look for ways to help bring them back together again. And I try to instill hope uh, that uh, that is a possibility uh, that requires work on their part to make it happen. 
Okay. So I know that um, that couples go through all kinds of challenges. So do you find yourself doing more of counts, uh, couples who have just recently gotten married or are you finding people um, coming to you who maybe just need to re-spark something? It's uh, been primarily uh, couples who've been together for a while okay. and they're coming to either uh, out of desperation of not knowing what to do or as you mentioned, to try to find that spark again. Uh, so that they can fall back in love with each other and like right. each other. <laughs> and like each other. Well, <laughs> I totally understand. So I, I have to ask, who initiates the the um, call in the first place? It's the, primarily the female, the wife, okay. the girlfriend. Okay. Who okay. initiates the call. I, I, I know that that I have the same experience whenever we have a couple that, that we're working with from a, a blended family perspective. It's usually the wife that makes the call. So are men just kind of less likely to make that call or do they tend to make it under duress? What what do you see? <laughs> <laughs> Probably more under duress or the okay. fear that they may lose uh, their mate if they don't make okay. the call. Okay. All right. So when a, when a couple comes to you, what's the very first thing you do with them? Well, the first thing to, I do is to let them know that this is an opportunity for them to really focus in on making their marriage better. Okay. And so I let them know that this is an opportunity for both of them to be heard uh, and and heard without interruption and to be mm -hmm. understood because hearing and being understood is so important and it doesn't always occur when they're at home with one another. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's so true. The, the number one thing I hear is we need to fix our communication. And, and just saying we need to fix our communication doesn't really quite describe what's going on. So do they tend to, to what's the symptom they usually bring up as far as why they are coming to counsel? Primarily communication and or infidelity. Okay. Uh, okay. Which creates conflict, of course. And so, uh, and that's when the wife usually is, is fed up and, uh, mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, looking to counseling as a last resort uh, okay. to save their marriage. Okay. So, what I heard you say, the wife is is in desperation, meaning it's been the man who has been the one that's had the infidelity issues. That is correct. Okay. For the most okay. part. Okay. For the most part. Um, so, so what um, what is the something that you can you can share with women, um, especially when when there is the belief that um, that if a, a husband had or a wife has had infidelity, that that's really a way to get out of the marriage. How do you deal with that? Because people will say that, you know, it, I have a I can actually get a Christian ma um, divorce because my husband has been unfaithful or my wife has been unfaithful. How do you how do you deal with that? Well, it depends, I, I think, on how important the marriage is to her and to them. Okay. Uh, if they truly love one another and really want to be together, that they can overcome the infidelity uh, and re-examining what may have caused it in the first place. And there's usually some, some symptom within the marriage itself that has caused uh, one or the other to look outside of their marriage. Some need or needs are not being met. Okay. Okay. I know that when we have, um, when hubby and I have counseled couples, sometimes they can get into a, um, their form of communication, which might be um, arguing or, or screaming at one another. How do you, how do you bring them back down usually, or do you let them go for a minute or, and then, then try to uh, look, take a look at what was happening there. 
usually I, I let them go for a few minutes so I can get an idea of how they do communicate. Okay. Uh, and then afterwards, I remind them that they're here to make things better. So moving forward, I would ask each of them to be civil with one another so that they can share with the other what what's really going on in their minds and how they're truly feeling. And it won't happen if they're yelling and screaming at each other. And so that's basically one of my ground rules because I want to create an environment where they feel safe mm -hmm. and uh, have that opportunity to share. And, and so I let them know from now on, we're going to be civil. If you truly mm -hmm. want to work on your marriage, that's, that's something that is important for you to respect. Yeah, speaking of a safe space, oftentimes um, what I have dealt with sometimes when um, a couple has has called me to to maybe work on some issues is that it tends to work better if I have my husband there, especially for the male, because the if they go sometimes to a female counselor, the, the male feels like he is going to be picked on. H have you heard that? Yes. Yes, very much so. And that's why the female, the, the wife mm -hmm. usually uh, requests a male mm -hmm. uh, counselor so that the husband won't feel like he's being ganged up on. Uh, exactly. so, uh, so, yes, I hear that quite often. Yeah. So so going back to the pandemic, did you tend to get more couples in the in the therapy during the pandemic? Yes, for sure, because now two people are thrown together. 24 seven. <laughs> and that is usually a, a situation that they're not accustomed to. And unfortunately, it creates some degree of conflict because now they're doing something that they're not familiar with and they start to get on each other's nerves. And then if they have children, <laughs> it only compounds the, the stress and anxiety. So yes, I, yeah. I, my uh, caseload went up. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it, is it still pretty much at a high level? I know mental health is, is such a huge issue now, especially related to um, to couples um, and, and, and women, especially. Are you seeing your counselor stay at that higher level? Yes, it has been for some time. And uh, uh, and I believe some of that is because couples, especially are wanting better marriages. They want a better relationship. They're tired of the frequent arguing and conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, and they recognize that they're going to be together. They might as well have a more of a harmonious relationship. Most definitely. But what, what are people arguing about these days? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually what they tell me is that we typically argue about everything. Anything. Okay. <laughs> and it usually uh, starts off with something small, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, you didn't do the dishes like you said you would. Okay. And uh, I, I don't understand. I've had to tell you this over and over. And then it, it explodes. Uh, mm -hmm. But yes, it's a number of things. Uh, uh, you, you don't listen to me. Okay. Uh, you don't do or pitch in to help with the household chores. Mm hmm uh, so it's it's a combination of things. And so some of this has probably been going on for a while, especially if you're seeing couples who have been married for, what, over 15 years. Is that considered um, at least seasoned? Yes. I would okay. Say so. Okay. So so what what changes? Are individuals changing or you know, I, I I think back to when you know in the in the dating phase, everything the person does is just wonderful. You you don't look at some of those flaws, but then after being married for a while, you start to say, well, he leaves his he leaves his underwear on the floor, or he he doesn't do the toothpaste thing right. So when all these little things come up, what is that really a symptom of? Uh, basically just not knowing the other person as you thought you knew them. Okay. And so, uh, uh, I, I point that out that, uh, it's important to not only get to know your mate, but to try to begin to understand them. 
okay. uh, better because uh, sometimes they, as you mentioned, they just overlook uh, what seems to be little things and they become an annoyance uh, to a person. And so uh, it gets to a point after so many years, they can no longer tolerate <laughs> these things right. that they did early on in the relationship. I know. I I I, I talk about this all the time. Me and my husband have it. Our, our things we disagree on are the how to load the dishwasher and whether or not the toilet paper should be over or <laughs> under. <laughs> and it, it is those little things that can become irritants when I mean there those are things that really don't matter. But that's how we that's how we do when you get frustrated with other things. So you you talked about um that what you try to help couples do is really get to know each other. So what are some of the things that, that you can, you do in, in therapy or even as homework to help a couple get to know each other better, even though they've been together for 20 years? Right. Well, one of the things that I have them to do is to write a list of what they believe they know about their spouse okay. and what they like or even dislike about them. Uh, and then uh, bring that back and then hear you know, I ask them uh, to be open and honest as possible. And the intent is not to create a conflict <laughs> once they leave <laughs> the session, but to really remember why they're here in the first place to make things better. So uh, each time they leave the session, they may not feel so good about the other based on what they heard. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I, I try to remind them of that fact. And so so we go through the list and talk about what they they believe they know about their spouse. And sometimes it's a surprising uh, to the other that, wow, uh, <laughs> either I'm not like that at all. <laughs> mm -hmm, right. <laughs> or I didn't know, I didn't realize you knew that about me. Okay. And so uh, it usually helps to uh, to bring them closer to one another by just getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know we've been married, what, for 21 years. In fact, you were there at our wedding. <laughs> and, um, and you know, there, we, we can still learn new things about each oh, other, even yeah. though we can complete each other's sentences and, and we can answer for one another sometimes. There's still new things that we learn about each other all the time. And so um, a couple should never stop really learning about one right. another. But I love your idea about writing down the things um, that you know about them, what you like about them, what you even don't like about them, because maybe they need to understand that maybe, uh, and this is hint, hint, maybe they need to know that, that, you know, you didn't have a dishwasher growing up and, and it doesn't matter how you load it. That, that's for my husband there. So. <laughs> 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 so, Couples come to you by the time that they're really in trouble. But do, um, again, just couples sometimes come just for a tune-up. And how is that session different than somebody who's really dealing with trouble? Well, I try to find out what uh, what is it that they're missing okay. uh, in the relationship that uh, they would like to improve upon or uh add some spark or excitement to mm -hmm. the uh, to the marriage. And uh, that's far different than someone coming in with an, a situation that's either serious, like infidelity or mm -hmm. or to a point where they just uh, have grown apart from their their loved one. So. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, the the first part, the first side of that is it's it's more exciting in terms of coming up with ideas on how they could add something special to their relationship mm -hmm. and, and uh, have them follow through with it and come back and, and talk about how they felt about uh, the experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how many sessions do, does a couple usually um, have when they're, um, well, you can do it both ways. Do you tend to have more sessions when they're, they have a whole lot of trouble or, um, is it shorter if they're just trying to tune up? What's the average number of sessions that clients should we have? For tune-ups, anywhere between six to 10 sessions. Okay. Uh, okay. If it's something more severe, 
it could go on for several months. Wow. Uh, depending on, you know, the amount of work they put into it. Now, and I know that. Scheduling. Go ahead. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. And if, if they have the time to come in, their schedules and my schedule. Mm-hmm. Now, I know when we had we had talked before that did you actually get excited when a couple comes in that that really looks like that eh, it's, it's really going to be a tough and challenging one. You actually get excited because you've been doing this for so long. You can really um, you can really, in a sense, educate them on on um, on how to to get through whatever they're going through. And, and again, I just I just remember that excitement you had about when you have a tough couple and how you can work with them. Tell me about that. Yes. Yes. I it excites me from the standpoint is of being able to share with them that there's hope. Mm-hmm. They don't have to think about this as uh, something that cannot be resolved. And I let them know that I look at them or I look at couples as being architects of their mm-hmm. marriages. And they can design their marriage any way they choose it to be. It's up to them. And so uh, uh, I let them know that it can happen. It can be better. And I encourage them not to look for uh, making the marriage okay or good, but to strive towards making it great. Mm. Uh, some I, sometimes I hear the comment, well, I just we just want the marriage to be like it was when we first got together. I said, well, that was good. But again, why settle for good when you have an opportunity to make it great? Yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Why? I mean, you're spending your whole life with somebody. So why not have an outstanding marriage? You know, so many times we, you know, whatever our, our family of origin is, we don't really sometimes get to see the real picture of what a strong, healthy marriage is. Right. And so sometimes we have to address those things. Do you see a lot of that where I'm just doing what my daddy did or I just doing what my mom did? Yes. Or not having a parent present in the home, mm. especially a father. And yeah. The male saying, well, I just don't know. And you know, I've never seen I didn't have a father, so I don't know how to be a good husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Uh, so, yes, I hear that quite a bit uh, or they've come from a dysfunctional family where mm-hmm. there was a lot of arguing and, and conflict and sometimes violence. Mm-hmm. And so they bring that right on into their marriage or their relationship and looking at is this is all I know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you, do you get a lot of tears in your sessions? The yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yes. Uh, and uh, what usually generates tears when I tell them that you say that you love your mate, however you say mean, hateful mm. comments to them, hit them below the belt with just meanness. But you, on the other hand, you say you love them. So how can you love this person and then treat them that way? And then there's usually silence and then tears, sometimes Mm -hmm. from both, Mm -hmm. as they think about that statement. Mm, You talk sound like you're talking scripture, (laughs) Larry. How can you say you love me yet? You haven't. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So so what do you find um, for I, I know that that you probably have some some Christian couples that come in or, even, you know, maybe they're not. But do you find that um, that Christian couples are better able to to understand forgiveness and, and the whole concept of of love? Yes, I would say so, uh, because of their Christian background and mm-hmm. those couples who are open to you know, including uh, spirituality in the sessions, I really get excited again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then we can really talk about, from a biblical standpoint, the importance of how they ought to treat one another and how they should love one another. And uh, so, yes, and forgiveness, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And uh, with those couples, I, I'll use a uh, some scripture or or parable or experience that Jesus uh, had with someone and showed love or forgiveness. Uh, and that usually hits home with mm -hmm. those couples. Yeah, that that's a blessing that that you can incorporate their spirituality and their understanding of um, what Jesus taught in in the session. And I I love it. I love it. So so obviously couples are coming at a later date. Do you do any premarital counseling as well? Yes, yes, I do. Some uh, couples wanting to make sure that uh, they're on the right path before they. Mm -hmm. They say I do, and uh, certainly we talk about uh, communication skills, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so yes, we uh, I, I do some premarital counseling as well. Okay, okay, and there's some data out there that that says you know what couples are arguing about, and a lot of times money comes up. What are, what are you seeing in in that area? Uh, typically, mismanagement of money, uh, <laughs> and uh, not having goals, financial mm -hmm. goals, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes selfishness. Mm -hmm. You know, this is mine and this, that is yours. And so you can't tell me what to do with my money. Mm -hmm. And this whole separate, uh, separateness that's occurring within the marriage and, uh, and not using the word we, mm -hmm. but also I, uh, and it can be very damaging to their marriages. Hmm. The, the, the concept of becoming one, do, do, do couples often really understand that? Uh, I don't think some of them don't. Uh, and some of them get married for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. So, so yes, yeah, so they have to learn along the way uh, what mm -hmm. that means. And, mm -hmm. um, and certainly I, focus in on that uh, if I see that when they come to me uh, to try to get them to understand mm -hmm. that you're a team. <laughs> you're, right. you're, you're coming together as a team and it's important okay. to think along those lines and think uh, outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so since we are asking for a sister friend, is there is a woman who knows that that either she needs counseling or um, that they need um, to come together and do do couples counseling. What would you suggest um, that she do? Uh, well, first of all, uh, talk to him about it and why she feels that there's a need for it. And the benefits of what counseling can do for them uh, in dealing with whatever issues that they're struggling with. Um, so that would be one of the first things that I would suggest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you see couples year? I mean, that you worked with many years ago, uh, just coming to you and say, Larry, we are so glad we came to you. Look at us now. A few, <laughs> <laughs> a few. Um, and uh, sometimes they come back, like you say, for a tune up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we were doing great. And then we, hit this stumbling block. So we, we're back again just to, to get back on track. Uh, but yes, for usually it's uh, at near the end of this, the, the process where they mm -hmm. are very appreciative of you know, any help that I was able to give them. And uh, they feel like they're ready to take on uh, their marriage in a whole different light, mm -hmm. in a whole different way. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure you get lots of referrals because I know I've referred couples to you because I'm like, if y'all want to fix y'all's marriage, talk to Larry City. He can help y'all out. <laughs> Thank you. So do you do mostly in person or do you also offer um, online counseling? Primarily in person. Uh, okay. I, I find that to be more effective because I, mm -hmm. I get a chance to look at them. They get a chance to to, you know, learn how to be civil with one another mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in this type of environment. And so I prefer that, but I have done online as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially maybe when we were in the pandemic and you had to 
and try right. to figure it out. Right. Okay. Okay. So let me show everybody how you can find um, Larry and the um, his practice of the Plaza Group. Let me. I have the information out here where we can show you. So if they're wanting to contact you, we have a phone number here of 816-529-100 extension one. And we'll leave that up here for a second so that if anybody wants to contact. But I highly recommend that, especially if your marriage is in trouble, that you seek someone who can do couples counseling. And again, if you are dealing with the I'm speaking for a sister friend here. If you are dealing with a husband who is, is really nervous about going to counseling, or maybe even you've tried it before and um, maybe didn't work, I highly recommend that you find somebody who is a good fit for you all. And, and especially if um, if your husband is, is anxious, feeling like if a female counselor is going to um, tag team um, with, with you, to um, beat up on your husband, then um, definitely um, consider a male a male therapist or counselor. I, I highly recommend that. Uh, what what words do you want to leave with my audience today, uh, Larry? Well, I would say, as I mentioned early on, that there is always hope in having a great marriage, and it requires work from both individuals. Um, the world has a way of, of impacting us and changing us every day. So if you're changing, obviously it's impacting your marriage or your relationship. And so if you're not paying attention to that fact, then you can get yourself into trouble. So remember that there's always hope that it can be better. I love it. I love it. And I, I definitely would, would um, agree with that, that again, there, why be in a marriage if you can not find some happiness and some joy with the other person? And there's enough things out there in the world that are beating you down um, yes. than to have a, a war going on in your own home. So definitely Counseling can save your marriage. That's what this is all about today, how counseling can save your marriage. So, Larry, you have really given us some good information here. And um, I have this scripture that I always show um, as I'm doing my lives. And it says, people learn from one another just as iron sharpens iron. And that is Proverbs 27 and 17 from the Good News Translation. And I can definitely say you have sharpened my iron on today as you always do, whenever we, we have a conversation. But, you know, you do owe me lunch, right? So we, we, <laughs> we are scheduled to, to have lunch so I can get my iron sharpened some more. I, I always learn something from you. So thank you so much for, for joining me on tonight. And I, I appreciate um, you being willing to be my first male guest on the show. And um, I look forward to doing lots of other things with you. But um, again, thank you. I believe that, that the information that you have shared can be a great help to couples. Hello, this is Dr. Janice R. Love. And would you like to be my special guest on Asking for a Sister Friend? Then I invite you to visit pearlsperfectedinstitute.com and visit the About page. We'd love to see how you can help a sister friend.